Not everything is known about the infested, and I gotta wonder, what kind of creature has this for a synapse? Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this Mastery Rank 11 primary weapon, the Synapse. I'm gonna be covering a cheap build, something affordable that anybody can build, but of course we also have the classic end game setup with a Riven. If you can find any, that is. That being said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually follow a more new player friendly approach, simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching this to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So if you're a veteran of the game and already know most of this stuff, then please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the synapse. First of all, let's check out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped and for that I'm just gonna be taking a couple of free shots. You'll notice that the Synapse channels a frontal beam and although the animation of the beam might suggest that it's all over the place and a bit wobbly, in fact the Synapse is a pinpoint accurate weapon. Per damage tick it only consumes half of ammo, so one ammo will mean two damage ticks and that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. First of all, mod capacity is 60 out of 60 and if your synapse only has 30 out of 30 then jump into actions and plug in an Orokin Catalyst. The Orokin Catalyst can be farmed from alerts, invasions, especially after death streams or you can simply pay 20 plat uh, to have one plugged in. It's also a possible reward from the daily sortie but after like, I don't know, 50, 100 sorties I only got like 3 of them, so there's that. For the weapon builds, I'm recommending you guys free for form. I should do it. My weapon has been formatted five times because I have a ribbon and we'll check that one out a bit later. And of course, we're testing as well. Accuracy is 100 because again, this is a beam weapon. Minus accuracy effects such as heavy caliber don't really have a real impact on the synapse. You can see the beam right at the end having a little bit more jitter but in all honesty it doesn't really matter and I 100% recommend heavy caliber. Hell, I'll even call it mandatory. Crit chance and crit damage high. Critical chance 39% and multi at 2.7. This is the highest of all continuous primaries in the game. Absolutely phenomenal. Fire rate is 12.0 with a magazine of 70. Keep in mind that you will be getting two damage ticks per ammo and a reload of 1.5, which again, it is pretty good. Riven Disposition, five out of five, which adds even more power to the synapse and a status chance of 13%. This is the only weak point of the weapon, that 13% status chance. You'll also notice that by default the Synapse deals an elemental combo. We got corrosive, 20 damage worth of corrosive. So for example, if you guys were to add infected clip, you will notice that the toxin does not get combined into the corrosive. If you wanna get more corrosive, you're gonna have to make another elemental combo. So think of this corrosive value somewhere along the lines of the last mod you could have. In any case, let's start slapping on some mods. Serration is mandatory and so is heavy caliber from my point of view. Again, the difference in accuracy, while there is like a slight difference, it doesn't really matter and I highly recommend you pick up this one from Vault Runs. Link in the card now for an easy way to farm Vault Runs. Next, we're gonna go into crit chance and crit damage because again, this is where the weapon shines. So pack on as much as you can. Point strike, 150% critical chance, which will bump up my crit chance to 97.5. Absolutely bloody outstanding. As for crit damage, of course, we're gonna be going with vital sense and our crit multi will jump up to five. Point nine. Next, multi shot. The best thing on mostly everything. Now, how does multi shot work with beam weapons anyway? It's a bit convoluted, but I'll do my best to explain. Now, basically, when you're adding multi shot to a bullet based weapon, okay, a heat scan weapon, it will mean that you're firing multiple bullets at a click of a button. Therefore, your status chance will go up. It's a shot status chance simply because you are firing two bullets, let's say, instead of one. When it comes to beam weapons, you're not gonna be firing multiple beams. And some people claim that, listen, you're getting more damage ticks. But from my experience, that doesn't really happen. So, what does multi shot do? It simply adds more damage. However, keep in mind that the multiplier applies to the modded damage value of the weapon. So it doesn't wash into the multiplier of damage like serration and heavy caliber. I know it's a bit uh, kind of weird, but in any case, multi shot is still good on beam weapons. When it comes to multi shot, of course, you have other options as well, such as vigilante armaments. Not a bad idea and the 5% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons is going to come in useful as well. You are doing plenty of ticks on a target and you will see some crit ups. For now, we're gonna leave it alone. 
I got my crit chance, I got my crit damage, damage, basically next I want to go into elemental combos and these should be slapped on a weapon depending on where you're going and who you're fighting. This is where the synapse shines and this is where the synapse suffers at the same time because again it depends who are you shooting. If your guys are shooting ferrite armor such as heavy gunners have then yes that is awesome because it will get amplified by 75% and also for the fossilized of the infested. But for example if you're shooting a target which does not have a weakness perhaps perhaps a resistance to corrosive then you're in trouble because you will still have that innate corrosive. In any case we're gonna be taking the example of corrupted heavy gunners today because these are some of the toughest targets in Warframe but if you guys are going up against the infested actually fire more often than not is enough to deal with them. Corrosive is usually reserved for their fossilized units and these are ancient healers for example so it's not totally a bad idea. If you're talking about the corpus faction then against them usually building toxin is more than enough because it bypasses their shields and deals damage to their health. Magnetic also will deal extra damage but directly to their shields. My recommendation would be just to skip the shields entirely and nuke their health. Please check the wiki for more details because I can go on and on and on. So let's build some corrosives. Should we go for the 90 mods or for the 60-60 mods? This one is an easy winner for the 60-60 mods. There's not a big difference when it comes uh, to damage values and test results between the 90s and the 60s simply because the base status chance of the synapse is low at 13%. But for all testing the 60s still performed a lot better. High voltage with 60% electricity and 60% status chance. This one is farmable from in-game. The mission is called Na Elgar on the planet Eris. You will find all the free secret caches and then upon extraction you got a 5 yeah 5% 5 chance of getting high voltage or shell shock which is basically the exact same mod but only for shotguns. You will need both of them and the grind is pretty crappy so alternatively you can go to the trade chat and pay 40 to 50 plat to get these mods. Please check Warframe Market before attempting to purchase or sell. I can't know all the prices by heart. Got electricity, now let's go into Toxin with Malignant Force which is a lot easier to obtain from Corrupted Vor in the Void. From the trade chat 10 to 15 plat, 60% Toxin, 60% status chance and my status chance went up to 28.6. And keep in mind that this is true status chance because when adding multi to the weapon that status chance does not budge. For example Vigilante Armaments, you see still 28.6. As for the last uh, mod of the weapon, this is what I like to call an option slot. Please cater each and every weapon to your specific gameplay style. From my point of view, on the Synapse, Punch Through is a fantastic idea with Shred or Prime Shred if you have that one. 30% fire rate will lower my kill time and the 1.2 meters worth of punch rule will mean that I'm able to hit multiple targets in a line. Or maybe you have them all clumped up with a, with a Nidus or a Vauban, something like that. Shred or Prime Shred is definitely a smart idea. Now when it comes to single target damage, if you want the best results, there are three mods that really came in super close to one another. First would be to amplify your elemental combo even further. In this case, since I already made corrosive on the weapon, if I'm adding infected clip, that's gonna go even higher. Another option will be a meme mod, <laughs> hammer shot. And I know some of you guys love this one. And by all intents and purposes, hammer shot is not a bad mod. It simply needed 20% more status chance to outweigh other mods. 60% crit damage and 40% status chance. The crit damage is absolutely phenomenal for the synapse. Again, my crit multi goes to 7.6 and the status chance patches up the one weak point of the weapon. These two really came in close with hammer shot edging out another 90 mod for the most part. Again, in the case of ferrite versus corrosive. But believe it or not, the highest amount of damage, which doesn't make sense and I'll explain why exactly doesn't make sense initially, is Vigilante Armaments. Now, if I slap an Infected Clip, you will see that I get more damage than Vigilante Armaments. Believe it or not, this one is better than both Hammer Shot and Infected Clip by a very, very small margin simply because of that 5% chance to enhance critical hits. It's basically like this. While killing a target, if you get at least one crit up, then Vigilante Armaments is better. If not, Hammer Shot. If not, Infected Clip. By all intents and purposes, I know some of you guys like to min-max. It doesn't matter. Go for Shred or Prime Shred. You don't need to go this far. But again, if you want the absolute best, blah, 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 Vigilante Armaments. And in this case, it's because of that small um, set bonus. Normally, that's only an afterthought, but when the mods are so close together, it does matter. And this will be our initial build and quickly I'm gonna check Nidus to make sure I don't have... Yeah, of course I have stuff that would destroy my test. There we go, no more cheating now and we're gonna be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Gunner level 120. 
These guys are equipped with ferrite armor and ferrite armor will take 75% extra damage from my corrosive. Now, when a weapon has innate corrosive damage like this, overstripping can be an issue, but because of the low status chance of the weapon, that is not really a problem. So you see, you will be getting some crit ups. And the value of the crit ups, of course, will be dependent highly on when <laughs> does the crit up happen, how much armor does the target have left. You saw that one, that one was 5,000. Earlier you saw 21,000 because, like now, 14,700. Because the target had lower armor because of the corrosive effects I'm constantly applying to them. So again, don't try that hard to min-max, in all honesty, it's simply not worth it. I run all these spreadsheets and stuff simply because I want to give you guys the best solution. Good, that's gonna be our initial build, but when you're talking a high critical chance weapon, you guys want bleeds through hunter munitions, don't you? So we're gonna switch to a bleed build. I kept my mandatory mods, serrationed, uh, point strike, vital sense, split chamber, and heavy caliber. Now for the cherry on top, Hunter Munitions, currently one of the most overpowered mods in Warframe, 30% chance to apply a slash status to an enemy on critical hit. Basically, if a primary weapon has a high or decent critical chance, Hunter Munitions more often than not is a viable and very strong way to go. So I have to recommend it. Next, when you're building a weapon for slash, building viral damage is a smart idea. And you know what? Viral is a smart idea in general because almost no matter, almost no matter the circumstances, viral will get you a decent result. Viral is the combination between cold and toxin. On a status proc, it will reduce the maximum health of a target to 50% for the duration of the viral effect. So for that time, in a way, your slashes will be dealing double damage. But if the viral effect slips off the target before it dies, you have to reshoot it again and there goes your awesome DPS. Notes on not to min-max that much. In any case, when you're building a weapon for Viral, it's a smarter idea to go for the 90 mods because unlike Corrosive, you don't need a thousand status applications, you simply need one good one to kill a target. Unfortunately for the Synapse, the base status chance is only 13% and I would recommend you use at least one, at least one 60-60 mod just to get constant Viral laps on the target. Anyone would do, let's see, let's go for uh, Rhyme Rounds. And we're gonna be adding the 90 toxin mod, which is infected clip, and boom, now I have viral damage, which is higher than my corrosive, so it will be higher on the status proc pecking order. Now, the best solution would be for you guys to go with prime cryo rounds, maxed out, blah blah blah, and the 60 60 mod for toxin if you want to build such as this. Let's test it out and see what it can do because there is one more version to the slash build. Same targets as before. And with a bleed build, what you want to do is kind of hit a target till about 50% HP, something like that, then let it bleed out. Very few ammo was consumed, just like with the corrosive build earlier, look at that. I would love to say that, listen, this is not viable, but it's so bloody strong, it is unbelievable what hunter munitions can do to a primary weapon. You saw that? That slipped off the target, the viral effect slipped off the target before the bleeds killed it, which is why I'm recommending at least one 60-60 mods. I don't think you need both of them, I honestly don't, but one would be mandatory. 97.5 critical chance on the synapse right now, so there will be plenty of bleeds. Uh, they're not a thousand bleeds, but the value of the bleeds are quite good. Let's see, something like that, 800, 2000, 1700, not bad. Not bad at all. Now there is one more version to the slash build. Unfortunately, it e includes uh, expensive mods. I don't particularly enjoy recommending them, but they are here, so we should mention them. Argon scope. What argon scope? Micro chance goes over 100%. I'm gonna get a lot more crit ups, so therefore the values will be higher. When it comes to the last option, it's gonna be more crit damage through uh, bladed rounds. Bladed rounds will make it so that the values of my slashes will be higher as well. Argon scope currently on the trade chat, going for around 200 plat. Once again, check Warframe market. Don't necessarily take my word for it. Check prices always, guys. Exact same targets as before, and in order to get the full benefit of this build, I'm gonna have to kill a target first. And look at that, yes. Orange crits are beautiful. Only thing more beautiful is red crits. There we go, bladed round buff is active and I'm gonna hit the target to roughly 50%. And again, you don't see a thousand slashes, but the values are quite nice with a build such as this. Honestly, I believe that if you're going for a slash build, the smartest way would be for prime cryo rounds and the 60-60 toxin mod, because even without argon scope, the crit chance of the synapse is 97 point something. So you don't need something like this, although I know that orange crits are definitely appealing. Hey, they're appealing to me as well. So there is that to take into account. 
that's the last standard build I'm gonna be recommending to you guys. Now we're gonna be switching to a Revan setup, and this one is a loner from a friend. It has what did it have again? Oh yes, extra damage, critical chance, and damage to corpus. But the poor guy rolled it 60 times, and this was the best he could get. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Now my crit chance goes to 159% without Argon scope. And if you guys want to talk about the ideal Synapse Riven, then this one is honestly pretty easy. Critical chance, critical damage, and damage or multi-shot with a harmless negative. I'm thinking something like minus damage to infested or something along those lines. This is a pure corrosive build because this is how I like to run this weapon, though I prefer punch through at times. You will see that I'm absolutely shredding through these guys like there's no tomorrow. Ammo efficiency is quite good as well. And if you want to lower the kill time even further, then going into some fire rate will be good. Again, red or prime shred. Absolutely bloody glorious. When it comes to single target damage, few weapons can stand up to the synapse. And there is one more thing. Lady Mirage Prime for some Warframe buffs. And she has... Rifle Amp. Rifle damage is increased by 27%, this is an aura, everybody in the party will be receiving the benefit and of course it is stackable as well. But if you guys know uh, you're going up against Grenier, then Corrosive Projection is guaranteed to give you better results, but Rifle Amp will grant its benefit regardless of your target. When it comes to Arcanes, you have Arcane Rage, R3, on headshot, 10% chance for plus 120% damage to rifles for 16 seconds. This one is farmable from the third Eidolon down on Cetus, you can pick it up from the trade chat currently going on PC for about 120 plat. As for your second option, I highly recommend Arcane Acceleration. On critical hit, 20% chance for 60% fire rate rifles for 6 seconds, which will reduce uh, our kill time significantly. But that might cause you to run into ammo issues. If that is the case, then pick up Carrier or Carrier Prime. It doesn't really matter which one of the two, because by default he comes with Ammo Case, increases ammunition capacity by 25% and converts ammo pickups into ammo for equipped weapons after 2 seconds. Now normally this is more than enough to take care of any ammo issues you might have. Very well, let's get to our final test and of course one more time the exact same target using Mirage's third ability for a massive damage increase as well as her clones. And you will see that these guys simply cannot stand up, that is bloody hilarious. This reminds me of the Amprax which is a fantastic weapon, but when it comes to single target damage the Synapse outdoes it. When it comes to AoE damage, the Amprax is the way I would go, or the Ignis Wraith. How could I possibly not recommend such a monster of a weapon? It absolutely tears through everything in sight, and if you want to increase its AoE capabilities, nothing simpler, just go into some punch through. Metal Augur, sure, but Shred or Prime Shred, once again, would be better. Highly recommend the Synapse, it is a beast weapon and the base build is not expensive at all. Okay, you might need 4 to 5 formal, let's take a look at it one more time, and none of these mods are expensive. Don't have high voltage, then forget about it and use the 90% mod with Stormbringer. And that's pretty much it, so just get rid of this, and now you're all set. And if you guys feel strongly about hammer shot, whatever, then by all means go for it, the difference will be minute. And that's gonna conclude the review on the Synapse, I hope you guys enjoyed it, as always my name has been Lazar, thank you so much for watching, like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, if you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon review then by all means leave it in the comment section down below. I can't promise you that it will be done by next time but I will be reading through each and every comment. But until next time guys, bye bye!